I'm so excited to be here. You look beautiful. Thank you. As ever. I'm excited to be here for you this evening, sir. Oh, you're here for me. I am. I was I was pretty proud of. Uh, by the way, we are at the Rebecca Creek Distillery, uh, pretty much Bull Verde, Bernie area. If you have not been here, it's absolutely awesome. So uh, that's where we are. And we are in front of a live audience of about 200. So those of you watching, so you know what's going on. Yes. But it's a room full oh. of friends and family and people that love us. So this is really special. It, it is It is definitely really special. And, and it's just cool to have everybody here. But it's also kind of weird. This is true. Because you know, we're so used to being in a room by ourselves. With like four people. But you look beautiful. And everybody, anybody that watches the podcast, I always tell Renee how beautiful she looks. You usually make fun of my earrings. And then I was going to say, then I have to mess with your outfit. I, t- I toned it down today. My earrings are on here Well, today. after Simple Man, hopefully these will be real. <laughs> Make sure you share it with all your friends. <laughs> um, I was laughing last night. I convinced Renee to go to Green Hall and go see, yeah, and go see my friend uh, Roger Craiger. And I don't know how well you know your spouse, but I know Renee so fucking well. And, and I know her so well that when she, she'll start scratching my arm. <laughs> And when she does that, I'm like, fuck, we got to go. Like, she's tired. No, but it's like sweet. I'm not like. Not bullshit sweet. I'm not like pulling you out like this. Well, I mean, not go. like that, but I'm she's like. like ah, <laughs> how many more are we going to drink, Steve? Like, which, by the way, if she's having fun, I have no signal for her. <laughs> because you're always, hoping you'll get lucky if I'm having fun. That's why. <laughs> Well, I always tell people, if, if I am having fun and Renee is not... Time to go. Time to go. If oh, yeah. <laughs> if we're both having fun, we get to stay. Uh, yeah, if I Renee's mean, having fun and I am not, we're fucking staying. But I love that all the women are like, yeah, sure, okay. No, that's, no I mean, that's exa- anybody else with that same... Yeah, pretty much, yeah. She does. No, because but the but the real reason is because chances are who's going to be the one that wakes up in the morning? Me. That's why. Oh, stop! That's what I love about the podcast: the lies. The, we need cameras. We need cameras no, in the who house. Who was the last person out of bed this morning? It was me this morning. Yes. This particular morning. And the morning before that? Me? No, you. You got people here who can call you out because they were with you on Friday night. Oh, they were with me on Friday night, and <laughs> I always get in trouble because I take civilians with me. My friends are civilians, and then they come with me to the show, uh-huh. and they're like, oh, fuck, it's 11 o'clock. Steve's really going to start drinking now. Because that's when I wake up, because I'm used to being out late, and then these guys, they're in bed by 8.30. Well, what time do you go to bed, guys? I don't know, 8.30. Oh. But you don't usually drink during your set. I do you not. You wait till the end uh, of it, and I your have, friends have already like started drinking at the beginning of the night. I have a really good friend. I'm glad you brought that up. I have a really good friend. You know, I started doing stand-up very, very early uh, in my life, I was I was 18 years old when I started doing stand up. So, by the time I was headlining, I was only 22, 23 years old. And man, I used to get annihilated on stage. Like yeah. I, I would get there and I'd put a bottle on stage and I would just drink the whole set. Beth's like, that and, sounds great. Let's yes. see that. Let's see and that. I would show. just get shit housed. Um, but a very good friend of mine, Casey Chastain, God rest his father's soul, his dad was always in our lives. And, and I remember after a show one time, I, I went to his house afterwards to say hello. And he goes, Steve, it's not a good look. He goes, be a professional. And he goes, people are paying good money yeah. to go out and see a show. He goes, I can't drink at my job. He goes, you're at your job. He goes, do me a favor, don't drink on stage. And that changed everything for me. And I decided, and, and I, I remember him teaching me that perspective, and I went, you know what, you're right, man. Like, people get babysitters. They, they spend money to go to the show, and then you go to the show, and I'm just getting shit housed. Well, that doesn't, it, it doesn't make for a good show. I can't yeah. be my best, right? And that was almost 20 years ago when he told me that. That's what so, I was going to say, how many years? Yeah. 20, 20 years, and now we're oh, here. Oh, you're, you're clapping like I'm fucking sober. I, uh, I'm not sober. I just don't drink. <laughs> I just don't drink in my show. Like, I don't... <laughs> Take the chip away. Yeah. I got no chip. That reminds me one of the... Oh, my gosh. And, but I get, I get all my friends in trouble because they go out with me. We go backstage. They get drunk. And then their wives are like, what did you do to my husband? I'm like, your husband's 6'6". 
I'm 5'2". I did not make him drink. <laughs> but we had, a, we had a good time in Austin. But um, you didn't go. You didn't go to the show. I didn't go. I mean, we, we have this tonight. We're premiering the special at the Tobin Center tomorrow night. And I, I'm usually good for one big hurrah, so I have to pace myself. Oh, no, yeah, I, I, I knew this weekend, because you know, we're going to do the show in Austin on Friday, and the boys were going out, which, by the way, are one night out. Renee and her girlfriends have fucking, every, every other week, there's different Hey, but groups. we still wake up early in the morning. Well, no, because these women, they have different groups. Well, these bitches don't get along with these bitches, and... <laughs> You know, these <laughs> these play pickleball and these yeah. don't. These bitches are friends from college and these bitches are friends from the neighborhood. And the I go, why don't you mix bitches? Oh no, bitches don't mix. We don't. <laughs> we don't. <laughs> and dudes, we don't give a shit. Dudes are like, all these dickheads fucking hang out. We're all idiots. We all hang out together. So we get one night. We get one night. To, to you get plenty out. of nights. So yes. then, and then Saturday, I knew that we were gonna. Well, Garrett had baseball games, and then yeah. I knew that we were. You know, Roger had invited. By the way, you know, uh, Roger Kreger. If you don't know who he is, I had the idea of putting music with comedy way back then. So I had filmed a special for Showtime, and we filmed it in San Bernardino, California. And I hated that I didn't get to do it in Texas. It was your very first special. Yeah, sh uh, Showtime and this producer had offered me the special, and, and I looked at the special, and it wasn't special. And I go, man, I, I just want my flavor, and I want that Texas flavor, uh, that Tejano flavor, if you will, that Tex-Mex, you know, you know, yeah. And, and that's one of the things that we, we deal with on a, on a big level after I tell the story. We'll talk about it. And I said, I called Roger Craig, and I said, dude, can I please have your rendition of Rancho Grande at the end of my special? And of course, Roger, Roger was so great. He goes, absolutely. And that was back in 2010 or 12. It was before we were married. It was with, oh, thank God, the happy day. <laughs> no, wait, we were married then. We were married during No, 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 we were, no, I went to my bachelor party that yeah. night. So anyway, but it was so crazy to me. We had, um, Ro I asked Roger for it, and Roger shook my hand, and he said, you can have it. So I go to the producers, I say, hey, Roger said, we can have it. He goes, the, the Hollywood producers go, we need a contract. And I go... I'm from Texas. I shook his hand. <laughs> we're fucking good. And they were like, no, we need a contract. So I had to track Roger back down, get a contract. Um, so then that was the big thing for Renee and I. How do we represent who we are without doing it in the stand-up, right? So Rancho Grande for me was one of those things where I was like, man, I, you know, I don't do, you know, the 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 Mexican comedy, if you will. You don't have a joke about a piñata. Yeah, I don't have a, or, yeah, nobody's throwing chanclas at each other, yeah. you know. Um, so Renee and I are always looking at our special and thinking to ourselves, how can we make it special? How can we do something that gives it that Tex-Mex flavor that I want, right? I always yeah. explain myself as, I love queso, I love brisket. I'm a brisket queso motherfucker, you know what I mean? Like. <laughs> If brisket queso's on the menu, I'm getting that, right? So when we did Relatable, I actually had Roger on stage with me in Corpus Christi, which we filmed on our own. Yep. Yeah. Corpus Christi people, yep. Uh, hide your wallets in that corner. Um, <laughs> and, then, and then for Till Death, you know, we called it Till Death because of Dia de los Muertos. The next special, yeah. And, and then we put the big, beautiful paintings on the back. We got to add Delilah. Yeah. So Garrett was three years old. Delilah is now three. And, and because of that special, we have these beautiful, if you've ever seen Till Death, the special, in the back of it, these paintings are what, like six by four? They're life size. Well, they're, yeah. the, I'm, for well. Me, uh, <laughs> Oops. <laughs> they're larger than life. You notice everybody laughs so much harder at your shitty jokes. I mean, Mine are great Short jokes. Short jokes always kill. <laughs> um, so we in, the, in our home, we have them in our home, and they're just beautiful. But next to Renee is a little three-year-old Garrett. And my daughter Delilah is now three, so we need to add her Send to her my side. Send her to the artist and have them paint her on there. And Delilah's so sweet because she sees all these pictures in the house, and she's like, where's me? And I'm like, well, you kind of just got here. <laughs> There's going to be some time that we need to get you in there but 
Um, when we did Simple Man, you know, that was a tough one. But I think over the years, you know, for those of you that don't know, I always start my comedy from the heart. You know, I, there's funny things, and then I go, well, but I want to talk about something that, to me, matters to me. And, and this special, I mean, it's just, there's I, I so couldn't be prouder. There's so much that matters in this special. It, I mean, it's, it's, it is something that, that, and it was tough because I had done the material for so long because of COVID, you know, that kind of backtracked things. And then we did, we did I Speak Wife yeah. in Waco. We never got to sell it. It's on YouTube. Which, by the way, I have been told that if we get two million streams on Simple Man on Netflix, that that is considered a very successful special in a year. Well, on YouTube with Simple Man, we've already done five mil. Sorry, in no, a year. Uh, with uh, Simple Man is not on oh, YouTube. No, uh, Simple Man's on Netflix. On that, no, yeah, uh, uh, I Speak Wife. I Speak Wife. Yeah, with I Speak Wife, we've already done almost five million. So if you guys can watch this shit on every TV you got, <laughs> it would. <laughs> It would really help. It would really help. Play it on every phone, on your kids' tablets. Just turn the volume down. Good luck getting the tablet out of their hand. <laughs> Gary was so bummed I had to leave. It kind of broke my heart. Oh. He goes, you and mom? He goes, what about babe? I'm like, we're leaving, dude, later. <laughs> um, but his game's not till like 6 or 6.30, so while y'all are watching that, maybe I'll watch his game. <laughs> Um, uh, well, thank you. Funny fact, Steve has not seen the special. I've been the one editing I've never it seen with a special. Rick. And so I have never seen one of my specials. I've seen the special over and yeah, over and over Pretty good, again. thank you. But Steve has no, he won't watch it. He will not watch I'll, it. I'll kick off the questions. Okay. I will kick off the questions because for those of you that don't know, not only did Renee produce, she also directed. And what that means, yes, <laughs> along along with our very, very good friend, Rick. So when they, how many cameras did you guys have? Was, did we end up with nine, well, seven like set, nine moving, right? And, but we switched, we had different cameras on Friday night than we did on Which, Saturday Which, by the way, night. you know those celebrity chairs that you see in like movies? You know, like the director's chairs? She got one, I didn't get shit. <laughs> Nobody got me a fucking chair. You got a shirt. I'm just trying to sell it. <laughs> uh, I did the yeah, special. There you go. Yes. Well, Sonny was so great. You know, he was he volunteered his talent um, in Austin, and he performed. I, I gave him a hug. I go, well, I guess I don't have three Grammys. And he goes, bitch, I don't have three Netflix specials. I go, well, I only have one, but thank you. Um, okay, so my question is, how many cameras? Nine at one time, but they moved around, so probably 21. Angles. How many? 21 angles. 21 angles. Yeah. How did you, did you already know in your head which angles you wanted while you were watching it? Or? I mean, I spent a lot of this, this last year traveling with you on the road more than I would have specifically to watch the special um, so that I, I knew it like the back of my hand. And I, as I'm watching your set, I'm thinking, I want this from this angle. I want this from that angle. Um, so I, I felt very prepared for the job. And then it became a matter of, on your previous specials, we didn't have this many cameras before. So I was never well, we worried. We didn't have a fucking budget before. Well, well that too. <laughs> but I was never worried about one camera picking up another camera and ruining a shot because I didn't, I didn't have them out of the way. And of a lot other. of people don't know that on Friday, what we did was we put the cameras behind me facing the audience so that you don't see cameras in the audience. And then Saturday, we took those cameras and we took them all off stage and then switched it so that they are now going towards me. So if you were not there on Saturday, you're pro on Friday, you're probably not making the cut. So, so if you were there But Friday. that being said, if you were there on Saturday, oh, they had the a roller. show you're seeing is, is the show from your live performance. Yes. Yeah. So how did, did you, and the, and, the, and the thing was, I had kind of an idea of what I wanted it to look like that I pitched to you. Yes. And it didn't work. Because, you fucked it up. Uh, <laughs> story of my life. <laughs> I, don't no, do, I don't do anything right. You don't talk about fellas. <laughs> uh, she's the best. I'm the worst. Um, no, I mean, so we, you have, you go into an idea of what your perfect scenario would be, but like with, with any live event, Things happen. Your the performance game is changes. The game has started. 
um, where you were standing on the stage, um, all those things change. You've got your moving cameras, and if they're well, done what was just even crazier when I got the okay from Netflix that we were doing a special, and we picked San Antonio, that, that we were already almost sold out, and then we had the issue of oh shit, now we have to put cameras in seats and possibly it's called killing seats so that we could put cameras. Right. So then you had to deal with that, but we got lucky that we didn't have to do that, or did we? We, we didn't end up killing seats because at that point so many seats were sold, but we also had to work with the venue and the way it was shaped and built and platforms here on the sides and the platform in the back. Ideally, I would have loved for it to have been closer, but we had to live with it where it is and get the correct camera lenses to make that work. Um, so there's a little bit of tweaking and improvising the day or two of because you've just been able to get into that theater. Well, Friday... So what I do when I, you know, I, I get the set with Brian. I don't know where Brian is, but Brian's a writer that helps me kind of put things together. He, he's the kind of guy that goes, put this joke here, put this joke there, like that kind of deal. So Brian and I had it all laid out, and, and for months I'm on the road. Literally, like I walk off stage and Brian's got the computer out, and he's like, you want these notes? I'm like, shit, not tonight. I want to get drunk. <laughs> but, um, but usually he'd sit down and go, hey, here's the notes. I mean, we got, I, when I do a special, it is perfect. I have it every word, every bit, in the order that I want it. So, but it, it does it for me. It becomes monotonous, and it's not fun to me anymore because I have to do it perfect. If you've ever seen multiple of my shows, there's always something a little different. Things change, but once I get three months out of filming, it is absolutely word for word perfect. So I'm already fucking tired of doing it, and we had to do it on Friday. Nailed it on Friday. They weren't fucking filming me. <laughs> I was like, shit. So then Saturday first show, kind of got it. You got it. I got it. You and, got it. And then second show, I was like, fuck it. And earlier we said that I do not drink. And then uh, Jake is in backstage. I go, what you got in that cup? He goes, you want to taste it? I go, yeah. And I grabbed it, fucking slammed it, and it was a triple... Rebecca Creek and Coke. And I'm glad nobody told me. It, uh, it felt, <laughs> I walked on stage and like at first I'm like, man, I'm, I'm normal. And then like a little bit into it, I'm like, hey, <laughs> there it is. And Renee goes, and she goes, oh my God, you were so loose that second show. I was like, well, Jake helped with that a little bit. A little encouragement from Rebecca Creek. <laughs> but it was. But that was Saturday second show if you were at that one. But people don't realize what goes into delivering a special like this. Yeah. Netflix gives us their, uh, what is it called, standards, Rick? Or what, like, I mean, what is it, 4K? So give us kind of a rundown of all the things that they request. And by the way, we're going worldwide with this. So they had to dub it in how many different languages? Oh, shit. A lot. <laughs> a lot. Worldwide, there's a lot of languages. Like Steve. 40 languages, right? <laughs> sure. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it was literally when Rick called me and goes, hey, this is how much it's going to cost to um, uh, do that. I was like, what the fuck? And he goes, oh, it's, it's about 40 different languages. So not only do you have to do 40 different languages, you then you have act to. act like you're doing the 40 different languages. I didn't do shit. <laughs> Uh, but no, they have to do that. You guys have to, like, got to color, color correct. Tell them all the stuff yeah. you have to do. Um, I mean, so I, I've seen this special a lot. You, you direct it. You see an initial cut. Writer Brian comes in, too, and we literally look at what bit did we love from the first show? What bit do we think he nailed in the second show? And without trying to make it too, feel too clunky and let you fly, because when you tell a story, it's just so damn good, we, we try to piece it all together. So actually, the show that you will see tonight, um, Rick, when he edited it, we can see it's color-coded, what is from each show, and it's pretty 50-50. Um, it's from both shows. Well, remember when we did I Speak Wife, I spilt water on my shirt? Remember that? So that if you ever watch I Speak Wife on YouTube, <coughs> I don't have water on my shirt, and then you come back, and I got fucking water on my you shirt. You have pit stains, you don't have pit stains. And then stain. you go back, and then the water's gone, and then it's back, and that's because we took it from... <laughs> All different um, angles, but 
Stop. Yeah, but then once, I mean, once we end with an edit, then we send it off to color correcting, just, you know, to make sure it all, all the different shows that we've picked from match and the colors are the same. And then it goes to sound mixing to make sure that it sounds like we're supposed to. And actually, we thought we were done and cleared for sound mixing. Um, and Rick sent it back. Well, Renee, and Renee came up to me. It's fucked up. It's fucked up. Look at it. Look at it. And I go, okay, we'll change it. No, you need to look at it. I go, I don't care. No, not I mean, my department. This, Fix it. This was the first time I was, you know, sort of flying I'm on not my own. I'm not my department kind of guy. I find people who are good at their job. I trust them, and I let them do their job. I wish others would learn to do that. Well, no, I just I was so afraid that you were going to say I screwed something up. So I wanted to make sure that everything was just perfect. And when we got the sound, I got to write a bit about that. It that, didn't. Was, it didn't sound quite right. We're driving home. Uh, we're going to go stay in Rockport. We're driving. And then Renee goes, um, hey, what was the question you asked? Um, oh, about the edit or something. And I go, I go. I know. I know the fight you're talking about. I can't remember why we were <laughs> fighting about it. But, no, she asked me a question. And I go, I don't care. And then she's like, are you sure? And she asked again. I'm like, Renee, I, I don't care. I trust you. Go for it. Two minutes later. Hey, do you care? I go, because if it had been me, I would care and I would want to see it. And by I was the like, fourth Are you time sure she you asked me, eyes on this? I lost my shit. You did. And then she's like, why are you losing your shit? I'm like, because I've asked you the same question four fucking times. <laughs> would you let me direct another special? No. <laughs> no. You haven't even seen it of yet. Of course I would. <laughs> R- Renee is so detailed, and I think that's why we're a good team. Renee is OCD. Everything has to be perfect. And I, my attitude is don't let perfection get in the way of accomplishment. That's, that's so... We with, push each other we, that we, way we for a better product. push each other. In, you know, I mean, it's bad for the, for the Gabes and the contractors at our house because Renee's like, fuck that grout. <laughs> we got to change it. Luckily, there's no grout in Simple Man. But I told Renee, I'm like, nobody comes to our house and goes, geez, did you see the grout? <laughs> These fucking animals. Someone go, what, eh? what are they, savages? Look at the fucking grout. Like, it's not, who said that? Someone said a better match. It, it, it did match, and it's the one she picked out, but she didn't like it, and poor Gabe's over there with a toothpick. It's got to be clean lines. <laughs> it's clean lines. All right, well, let's open it up for questions. If you have a yes, Rick, you go first. The drinking game. Do you remember the Simple Man drinking game? Yes. Oh, yes. Oh, that's it. Today's a good day. Yep, today's a good day. Every time I say a number, you got to drink. Apparently, Steve says a lot of numbers in Simple Man. and You're Right, Brian? Uh, there's a lot. Watching it every single time, I didn't realize it. I do say 37 and a half. Yes, but there's a lot once you notice, right? Once you notice it, yeah. So every time I say a number, you got to drink. So... Adrian has the um, microphone. Any question you have about us, about the special, anybody? Because we can keep talking. Steve? Sorry. Sorry. Um, I, so I have a question. So when you guys are home at the dinner table, you all have a rule. You cannot talk about freaking work. Oh, and not, well. if someone breaks that, how do you call them out? Uh, it's tough because, I like you, I like to work, and my whole work is on the phone, and Renee has been pretty patient with me because I'm constantly on the phone, constantly texting. You'll go outside and take calls sometimes when it starts to... Well, I think when you no, start you know to see I me do that? looking annoyed, I don't know if you, you have this, outside. Steve. <laughs> you know why I do that? Because... <laughs> it, but this one here wants to know everything. So I'll have a conversation, and she'll be like, so who was that? I'm like, that was dumb. And what that were y'all talking idea. about? And... Well, what are y'all going to do? And what happened? And am I invited? I'm like, fuck! Why were you laughing? Why were you laughing? Yeah, why were you laughing? (laughs) I'm like, I I do say that in the new new act where you do have uh, issues with my happiness levels. (laughs) I have been in trouble for being too happy, which is insane to me. But uh, but yes, that is a good question. But I mean, I think we're lucky because Renee and I are both invested in the same business. So a lot of times it, it overlaps. And right now with two kids, not many dinner table opportunities. 
Yeah. I mean, it is figure it out. Let's fly. Let's go. Which I prefer because every time she cooks, it's some bullshit meal, some plan she found on Pinterest. I have this new program. They send us shit. You follow the recipe, and it tastes terrible. And <laughs> nobody eats it. But we're all going <laughs> to eat it. But yes, Renee's into the, what are those called? The meal kits. The meal kits. Yeah, the there's meal, meal kits. kits. Mom, did you have meal kits when we were kids? <laughs> I mean, Hamburger Helper, I guess, was the first fucking <laughs> meal the, kit. The original yeah. meal no. kit. They were always cooked meals with homemade tortillas all yes. the time. <laughs> homemade beans, too. Oh, how times have changed. <laughs> but you just answered my question. You're on the phone all the time. Is that why you never answer my calls? Oh! <laughs> the original Captain Evil. Uh, edit that out. Edit that out. <laughs> Start the whole show over. Uh, anybody else? Question. You have to come up here. Yeah, because we want to make sure that we can hear it on the podcast. Yeah, we have a question over there. Yeah, come on over. Come on over, come on over. Y'all run, oh, up, run up to the mic. Neighbor Mike. Neighbor Mike. <laughs> All right, Steve, so... I was like, Mike lives next door. He knows a lot. Are we sure we want to hand him the mic? He does, know, he does know a lot of shit about us. And, you know, it's sad because our neighbors were Charlie, and we had a lot in between us, and we were great neighbors, and then Mike moved right the fuck in. <laughs> <laughs> it is serious. All right, so... In the last year, you've blown up. You've become a big star, okay? Well, thank you, but... So my question is, are you going to keep mowing my lawn after the special, or yes. do I got to... Yes. Or do I got to... Do, do I got to hire... Do I got to hire somebody? I do, I do cut his yard, just to be... That's, that's not a joke. I, he I, said it was a serious question. Yes, I will yeah. always cut your yard. I will that, that, always that cut cuts, your yard. That cuts into my budget. I will always cut your yard... My, uh, the, the other day, though, I'm like, because they have these big, beautiful windows in their backyard. And then the other day, I was like, maybe I should, like, let them know that I'm going through in their backyard so that the wife can be dressed, you know. But I'm back there cruising, you know. Hey, if, if that's all I got to pay for my lawn to get mowed, done. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Any other questions? Oh, Mr. Gabe, in hey, our house every day. Hey, as a dad coach, can you explain the uh, experience with your son's first home run over the fence? Well, it wasn't over the fence. It, that, that one didn't go. He, he hit it to the wall, and it was an in-the-thing home run. But it was – I mean, Garrett's such a great mm -hmm. baseball player. And I, I try to not be overly angry when he makes a mistake, and, <clears throat> and I try not to be overly um, – excuse me. Overly, um, yeah, overly. <laughs> I, I try to stay even keeled because I don't want my son to play baseball for me. I want my son to play baseball because he loves to play baseball. <clears throat> and I think there's a lot of times where a kid makes a mistake and the first thing they do is they look at dad to see if dad's approval is there. So when Garrett looks at me, I'm usually like this. You know, or if he does a great play, I try to be overexcited to let him know that I don't care about the mistakes but I really love when you succeed. So when it comes to baseball, I really try, but I do get, like, I can't believe how nervous I get, because it was two outs, they gotta win by three, there's two kids on base, and fucking Garrett, and I'm like nervous. <laughs> and I'm like, don't be that kid, man, like, please. <laughs> and these baseball moms nowadays, they're fucking gangsters, so you, <laughs> don't be like, shit! It's like, oh, okay, sorry my kid ruined your life. Fucking eight year baseball, relax. Um, any other questions? Sonny. Ari, I got a really serious question for you. Oh, shit. They're all Real shit. serious. Uh, you are a, a celebrity. Wow. You are very well known throughout the community, throughout in comedy. Uh, I've known you for about, what, two years now? Maybe yep. going on two years? You're a really good dad. You're a really good husband. Well, how, how have you managed to stay number one humble? Because I, I know when I call you and you're busy, you still manage to text me back, hey, I'm on a Zoom, but I'll call you back. You don't call me back, but I know you're busy. <laughs> it's okay. But aside from that, when we see each other face to face, I'm sorry, you've always been this just humble. How are you managing your success 
and not becoming a diva like three-time Grammy winner Sunny Self said. How are you? <laughs> How are you? Because I'm a Captain diva. Evil. I'm a diva. I'm a diva. I, you know, it, 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 it is weird to me that you say you're a celebrity or Mike comes over here and says you've blown up. I, I don't see it. I don't, I don't consider myself anything but her husband, y'all's friend. You know, I, and, and I, don't, I never wanted to be famous. I just wanted to be a comedian. So... I don't know. It, it, I mean, people tell me that. I'll th- like, oh, my God, like, Steve, you're this, you're that. And I'm like, I don't feel that way. And it's very weird to me when I'm doing meet and greet and somebody's shaking to meet me or, or they're, they're just like, oh, my God, thank you. And it, it's so very weird to me because I'm just this little dude from Gregory, Portland, Texas with a dream. Like, I, you know. But I, I also think I'm, I'm fortunate to have great parents, you know, that, that always – and, and a great family that could give a fuck that I'm a comedian, <laughs> you know? Uh, I always say I go home and they're on the refinery business. I go home and they're interested in me in about for about five minutes. And then after that, they're talking refinery shit. And I'm like, well, I wrote a dick joke. Uh, Y'all yeah, wanna hear about it? Like, I, <laughs> you know? Um, but, but I think that, you know, it, it, is, it is hard and it is, um, it, it has gotten weirder to me because I don't feel that way and I don't, you know, like Renee and I will go to dinner and we completely forget we're just having dinner and then we look over and half the restaurant's like this. I'm like, good thing we're not fighting tonight. (laughs) 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 But it was, you know, it was really cool last night, you know, we we, we went to um, Roger Craiger and I'm standing in the back and all of a sudden Roger Craiger goes, ladies and gentlemen, Steve Trevino's here. And to see the entire green hall fucking turn around, I was like, oh, shit. Like, hey. <laughs> you, you know, it's, and then, you know, I went backstage to, to give Roger a hug because she was already doing this and we had to leave. <laughs> <laughs> um, and Roger goes, we're going to do an encore. Please bring me up. And I go, okay. So I jump on the green hall stage, which is, oh, my God, right? I mean, it's a legendary stage and I got to bring Roger up but when I walked on stage and I'm like hey man all these people know who I am that's pretty cool so it's still cool to me and it's still I, I think if you if I ever lose the feeling of man this is cool then yeah. there's something wrong because I still think all of this cool. is so cool and so cool that I get to come to Rebecca Creek hang out with Steve and he's opening the distillery for me and we're hanging out I mean all that stuff is just I, I still think it's fucking cool. Mm-hmm. And, I, and we were talking about it the other day where I have some comedian friends that I literally stood in the parking lot of the comedy store with them. And I'm not going to name any names because I never do when it comes to that. And they were the humblest, nicest people. And to see them make it now, and I look at them and I go, how did you become that fucking dick? I never thought that you would be this guy. So I also watch. I observe and I see those guys. I go, I ain't fucking being that. Right? You know, today I was late like a diva, but it was because I was at my son's baseball game. Right. So it's different, you know. Hey, Steve and yes. Renee. So to piggyback off of that, we love you as a comedian. We watched every special. Thank love you, love you, love you. Love you. Uh, fellow Corpus Christian right here from Corpitos. Um, we just wanted to know what your dream job would be. If you weren't a comedian, what would your dream job be? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Renee knows that that is not a possibility. <laughs> I mean, I unless mean, you got things a, we can do about that. I mean, unless you got a fetish, but uh, <laughs> um, I don't know. You know, we, we've talked about that before. I absolutely love coaching little kids. Like, I don't want to coach older kids because fuck them. But <laughs> I, I, I love being with little kids. I love inspiring them. I love laughing with them. I love connecting with them. And being I think silly. You're, being, you're the silly I get, coach. I get silly, but I, I can also still be stern with them. And I like getting to know these kids. And I think a lot of times we forget that they're eight. And I don't. I always put myself in their shoes and go, what must it feel like to be eight? And I try to remember how I felt when I was eight and that, when I struck out when I was eight, to me, it was devastating. So as an adult, I look at this eight-year-old, and sometimes we go, oh, get over it. You just struck out. But 
I try to look on their level and go, dude, I, I, I know how you feel right now because when you're eight, striking out sucks, right? And believe me, life's going to kick you in the balls, and you're going to understand later on that this strikeout you had in baseball means nothing, but right now to you, it means everything. So I probably would have been a coach, a teacher. I love to teach. I love to, yep, I love to be with kids. Yeah. What do you think I would be good at? I always say, and it's still entertainment related, but I think Steve does love to give advice. He does love to be a teacher. I think he would make um, a great daytime talk show host. <laughs> like, uh, like his version of Jerry Springer or Steve Harvey. <laughs> No, well, I, well, I will say that I think I would be good at that because I love talking to people. I will interview the fucking Uber driver. Yeah. Like, by the time I leave my Uber, I'm like, oh, man, he's from here. He's got four kids, <laughs> right? His dream job. He loves America. Like, I'm like, uh, but I'm genuinely, but I think that's why I'm a good comedian because I genuinely want to know about people. And I'm a server and I am somebody, you come to my house, if I'm having a party, I will not sit down, and I want to serve, and I want you to have drinks, and I want you to be comfortable. Renee takes advantage of that. <laughs> Re Renee will be outside. We need the heaters. Where's the heaters? I'm like, okay, and then I'm fucking dragging the heaters out. Ooh, you know what would be nice if you started the fire pit? Yes, ma'am, and I'm fucking running. Everybody's having a We've good time. We've heard the cabana boy joke. But that's pretty much yeah. what, what I am. But I, th I, would, I think I'd, be like, I'd love to be a kid coach. Oh, this man right here, Marine, good friend of mine. Give him a round of applause, Juan. Yep. Hello. Through your journey as a comedian to get to the status you're at now, congratulations. By well, the thank way. you. Um, your down times, what was that drive? What kept you going? All what the no's. The no? All the no's. I mean, when I was a kid, I always tell people, especially teachers, your words matter as a teacher, Things as a coach. The things you say, again, when you're a little kid, they mean something. And I had teachers that told me I would amount to nothing and hated me. And I had teachers that absolutely loved me. They both inspired me equally. The teachers that told me I wouldn't make it and I had no business in comedy, those inspired me and I went, fuck you, watch me, right? And the teachers that told me I could do it helped me tell them to go fuck themselves, right? But that was always the drive is all the no's and there was also no option. For me, I was like, this is what I'm going to do. And I think Dave Chappelle said it the best in an interview. You know, his dad went up to him and he said, hey, comedy's really hard. And Dave Chappelle told his dad, well, you're a, you're a teacher. He said, if I can make a teacher's salary telling jokes, then I made it. So that's always been my attitude. Like, if I could just pay my bills and not need anything or anybody, then I made it. And that's what I hate about this new generation this new generation, you know, these comics, they go, Steve, I want to go on the road. And then the first thing they ask is, how much money am I going to make? Where am I going to stay? Do I have to share a room? And I'm going, I slept in my car for three months in a Walmart parking lot. You know, I drove across this country at the drop of a hat with no money in a shitty car, and I slept in Walmart parking lots so that I could make a gig. Because all I cared about was doing stand-up. So the drive came from the no's and the yeses. And every time Renee and I, you know, when we met, I always told her, as long as I keep doing that every year, we're going to keep going, baby. And I would not have made it without her because there was a time where I was getting zero opportunities and Hollywood kept going, well, we want you to be the next George Lopez. And how come you don't do Mexican comedy? And the only shows I was allowed to do was Refried Friday at the Improv and Mexican Tuesday at the Comedy Store and Mexican Monday at the Laugh Factory. And... I remember sitting on our bed in tears, no bullshit in tears, and I told Renee, maybe I need to do that Mexican comedy so we can make it. And Renee goes, don't, do you. She goes, I don't care what happens. It's me and you, do fucking you. And we did that. And here we are. That's a great question, thank you. Oh. Uh, Renee, how many no's before you went out with him? That drive. <laughs> how many no's? I'm pretty persistent. He she, was uh, very persistent. Uh, yes, she... Uh, it, it was Persistence weird though. pays off. It was weird for us. It was it was the the day that we hung out, which by the way we talked about it. She ran into a street sign as we were walking, and it was. And I was. I'm like, a little clumsy. I was like, oh my god, I love this girl. Because um, I laughed, I thought it was funny. But we were just, it was weird. We were just together. Like it wasn't like a, 
hey, you want to hang out again? Or like, it was just, we were just, that was it. And she wouldn't fucking go away. <laughs> ah, porn star status. <laughs> Thank you, brother. Uh, also, juvenile probation. This man is a saint. Give him a round of applause, please. Thank you. Uh, any other question? Round of questions. Oh, uh, I'll try one. He goes, fuck it, I'll try. We'll see, uh, we'll see how this goes. We'll do one more question, then we'll wrap it up. And then I'm so excited to, to sip with Steve here in a minute. Yes, Mr. sir. Mr. Trevino, uh, I see one of your sponsors is, is veteran-based, I guess. Uh, well, not a sponsor. Okay. Uh, I am on the board of Helicopters for Heroes, where we raise nice. money for veterans. Yep. Nice. I, I hear you support a lot of veterans and, and that sort of stuff, right? Family, I have family from uh, Corpus Christi, Taft area, Eagle Pass, that are all veterans. Myself, duty, I'm active duty right now. What's your connection with the military service? You know, my. I, I, Why does he care so much? You can tell he cares a lot, right? Well, you know, my dad's a proud Vietnam veteran. And, yeah. yep. A my purple heart. Yeah, my dad, my dad had a plan for me. And my dad would tell me every day, he goes, you're going to go to the military and you're going to be a game warden. That's what he would tell me. You're going to go to the military, you're going to be a game warden. Like all, even when I was a little kid, military, game warden. Military, so we'd out there fishing and the game warden would go by, that's going to be you. You're going to be a, you're going to be a game warden. You know, <coughs> well, I, I ended up breaking my back in high school, uh, which I think, honestly, I do believe in God and I think that things happen for a reason. And I think my personality and my attitude, had I gone to the military, I'd probably be dead uh, because of the kind of person I am. So I think God was like, I got something better for you, right? So I broke my back, and I remember um, when we went to the hospital and my dad asking the doctor, can he still enlist? And the doctor was like, fuck no, like he can't. So I know that my dad desperately wanted me to serve, and as I got older, I realized that I don't have to put on a uniform to serve this country. I don't have to put on a uniform to serve these veterans. And I thought to myself, well, Number one, we'll thank the veterans on, and bring awareness. And then I met Jake, and Jake got me involved with Helicopters for Heroes. And now every year we raise almost $800,000 for our veterans. So I, but I also grew up uh, with a, a father that went to the Vietnam War, and I also saw the effects of that. You know, and a lot of people don't realize what war does to a man. And I saw it firsthand. So I care deeply about our veterans. And, and this is my way of serving and looking at my dad and going, see, maybe I'm not a game warden. And maybe I'm not in the military. But I do serve, and I still fish and hunt. So that's pretty good. Yep. So but that's why. That's a good question. Any other question before we move along? Yep. Come on over, young lady. Do you like these questions? I'm gonna let you, we need some for Renee. No, no, Renee. no, we don't need questions for me, but this is also really, really cool because, uh, like I said, a lot of the people in the room are friends and family, and so it's just interesting to see what they choose to ask. Hey there. Uh, this question is kind of for both of you. So as your two children grow and watch you, have you guys talked about if they decide to pursue your career path oh. and how you might cultivate that? <laughs> yes, I don't. I do not want my kids in this I, was gonna say, I don't know if Steve wants to cultivate it. I, no, we, I don't want my kids in this business. And I, I tell you why. I am an observer, and I have observed that kids in this business do not turn out fucking well. <laughs> Macaulay Culkin is not doing fucking good. He's turned a corner. I mean, but I mean, seriously, so if, if at 18, if they decide to do this, then by then, hopefully, they've been raised. Hopefully by then they, you know, imagine having celebrity a as a child. You know, you look at Britney Spears, and I don't know about you, but it's not funny. It breaks my heart. And the reason she is the way she is is because she was a child star that just has no concept. Yeah. It's like Renee laughs. We walk in my fucking green room, and it's like, Mr. Trevino, what would you like? You know, you want barbecue? You we, we'll, And they got these runners I, I, like, I, I can't even, I'm like, oh, I got heartburn. And the runner's like, yes, sir, I'm going to the store. I'm like, I'm like, whoa, don't leave yet. Like, I think I, and no, Mr. Trevino, we'll go get it for you. And I'm like, whoa, 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 fucking chill You're out. Like, I might just need to poop. <laughs> but, I mean, but imagine, 
imagine having that kind of attention as a, as a child, you know? And I also know how hard this business is. I also know how creepy and disgusting yeah. on the high, high levels it can be. So we really try to protect our kids and we, we try to surround ourselves with our neighbors, our friends, the people we play baseball with that are regular families raising regular kids. And hopefully, you know, it was the other day a kid came up to me at the school and he goes, I saw you on Netflix. <laughs> he goes, I told everybody Garrett's daddy's on Netflix. I'm like, oh, fuck, poor kid. <laughs> <laughs> like, shit. Um, but we really try very hard to give our children a very normal upbringing. <laughs> and it's not easy. But we also, I mean, that great assault, well, we hope they choose to do something different. We also do really encourage the arts in our home because we think that it's important and valuable and we want to live in a world where people do Enjoy do plays and music and support that. So we are big supporters of, of, of the course. arts in our home. Well, so it was uh, Daddy Raymond uh, over here taught Garrett how to do some jokes when he was like three. And I don't know if you've ever been to one of my shows where Garrett actually goes on stage. So when he was like three or four, he would do these little jokes, you know, uh, what's the difference between a snowman and a snowwoman, snowballs, right? And it was hilarious from a three-year-old. Um, but then, you know, because Daddy Raymond is a musician, he also taught Garrett to sing. So one day, I'll never forget it, La Jolla, California, comedy store, little Garrett, four years old, walks on stage and sings, and people were throwing dollar bills at him. And he was picking it up like a little stripper, right? <laughs> <laughs> and he walked off stage and he goes, Daddy, no more jokes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm singing now. And I was like, shit. I go, why, son? He goes, look at the money. I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> so, but, you know, we do love the arts and, and we do, you know, I would support my kids and whoever they become and whatever they want to do. But uh, I know how dirty and gross this business is. And we, we want to make sure that we try very hard to give them a normal um upbringing and, and try to keep our kids humble too because you know it, it, we feel very lucky and that's another thing the helicopters for heroes has been so valuable for me as a parent because I take Garrett with me you know he goes to the golf tournament with me he sees people with with no legs with prosthetics and he says daddy what happened and I go well why don't you go ask him and my son will go over there and ask him and you know now we go to restaurants and he sees a veteran hat, and he says, Daddy, can we buy their food? And I go, yeah, buddy. And he'll get up, and he'll go over there and say, thank you for your service. And so when you, you know, it's been a valuable lesson for my son to also volunteer and to also, and it, and it motivated Renee. Renee's, yeah. Renee, tell them what you're doing. I'm very proud of you. Um, you know, vets was not my cause. I'm not from a family of people who have served, but I was so inspired by the way you were helping. And as this Well, we're Mexican. They serve tacos. They serve, <laughs> I mean... No, but as the as the podcast grew and I started to have a platform of my own, I just felt compelled to do something. So for me, the cause is, is children, foster kids, families who choose to foster children, children who kind of get stuck in a system. And we've done two events. And, and Renee, how much have you raised for the foster system in New Braunfels, Texas? Oh, gosh, I don't know. About 40 grand. Yeah, I think so. Uh, about $40,000. So. Yeah. But... You know, we do have such a great support group in New Braunfels, and, and there's so many strong women and parents that, that we hang out with that anything and everything we do, they support, and we absolutely love them for it because, you know, I, I had to go to a new baseball team. That's a long story, and I'm like, I don't want new fucking friends. I like my friends. Like, fuck these people. So, but we have been very lucky, and the women that Renee hangs out with, too, have been so generous and so caring, and we just appreciate all of them, and a lot of them are here. So thank you. Give them... A round of applause, please. Thank you. We have uh, a good, we have a yep. good community. Yep. One more question, Rick says. We have time oh, for one more question. More. Yes, yes, sir. You look like Gabriel Iglesias lost weight. <laughs> <laughs> All right, this kind of like two-part question. First of all, I couldn't hear you. What were we saying? Oh, kind of like a two-part question. Yes, sir. Uh, have you ever been able, or were you able to get your TV? The big TV. No. Oh, you got to rub question. it in, don't That's a good you? Good question. I never got the big TV. Renee so, does what she wants. I think this would be a good chance if this special gets to two million. You should be able to get your TV. Is that a deal? <laughs> <laughs> Is that a deal? Yes. Put her on the spot. Special gets yes. to two million. You can have the big TV. <laughs> I 
like that guy. More of that, more of that. Uh, just wondering, uh, can Steve get a blowjob? I want to put it on. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> Next question. <laughs> Next question. <laughs> um, All right, well, thank you. That was, uh, well, we got to thank our sponsors, Aztec yes. Chevrolet, always taking care of us. And anybody in this room, we will deliver the vehicle to your house. We will deliver the vehicle to you. Oh, we have one more question. Is that what, oh, my friends from Aztec Chevrolet are in the house. Give them a round of applause. Yes. Yeah. Um, from the very beginning, Aztec was our first sponsor, and we've been so appreciative of them. Miss Dora was our first sponsor, really, but she used to sell eyelashes. Do you still sell the eyelashes? No more. Fuck that. Yeah. Um, Old Salt Coffee is delicious. It's a veteran-owned and operated. Uh, Trevino 10 gets you a discount. Rao shirts. Do I see any Rao shirts here I saw today? Aztec oh. Chevy sporting the Rao shirt. Rao shirt, shirt baby. <laughs> yep. Everybody download Pick Cherries right now. Um, and then Prestige Auto. Give them a look, please. Beautiful place. Yep. And we've been so lucky. The relationship uh, that we have sparked here with Rebecca Creek has been just awesome. I mean, it has been awesome. Thank I mean, you for having us. I mean, it's right up my alley, all the whiskey I can drink. Um, but, but again, you know, we don't ever, we've had offers to do other things when it comes to sponsorships. And if it doesn't align with something that we don't like or do, we just, we don't get involved. And when I met the folks here at Rebecca Creek and they were Texans and they were, you know, they're huge, but they're mom and pop still. They're still running it right out of, out of here. And the owners are accessible. Most of the times you come here, they're walking around. They're making sure you're happy. This place has grown just in the year we've been hanging out. It's unbelievable. Um, but we've had a wonderful experience uh, with our friends at Rebecca Creek. The Spanish Oak is almost out, and that's probably my fault. I'm going to steal some more, definitely. So with that being said, thank you all for watching. <laughs> <laughs>